Hey folks, Jason, Tradesman Outdoor Adventures. And I am today I'm speaking to you from the Tradesman Outdoor Adventure uh, Garage Gym uh, because it's a little windy outside. Uh, and rather than killing uh, the video quality or killing the narration, I figured I'd do a little introduction here. So what are we talking about today? You've already seen the title um, on the truck. Love everything about it, with the possible exception of the gas mileage, understood but also the braking performance. So this is my daily driver. I spend a lot of time on the DC Capital Beltway. So a lot of stop and go traffic. There is just about 37,000 miles on the truck and I'm already starting to get a little bit of a squeal out of the left front brakes. So the pads are probably starting to get a little low. The truck hasn't had a lot of towing, but it does do a lot of stop and go. And if you look at the Ram website, they will say, well, your pads should last anywhere between 30 and 70,000 miles, depending on how you drive. Towing and excessive stop and go will reduce your braking brake lifespan. In addition, it's a big truck and it doesn't stop quickly. Um, I, before this, I had a 2000 Ford Excursion, which is a bigger vehicle, and I felt like that stopped faster than the Rams did. Could be completely in my head, may not actually be the case, but in any event, it's time for me to change the brakes. And while I normally try to uh, be as budget-minded as I can, what I wanted to do was try out the power stop. I think it's Z36, whatever's in the title. Um, the ceramic brakes and the drilled and vented rotors just to see if I can get more longevity out of the brakes and increased stopping power. I am on the Beltway, I am in traffic a lot. Most people respect the size of the truck. Some people just seem to like cut in front of it and brake check all the time. And there's been a couple times where it's been a little close, the beast doesn't stop that quickly. So what we're gonna do today is I'm just gonna replace the front pads and rotors. We'll do the brake-in procedure. First, I'll walk you through what you get with the kit. It's on the tailgate right now. I'm not gonna do a how-to because I, I don't think it's really necessary. There's plenty of other videos out there that show you how to do brakes on a Ram 2500. I've watched some of them just to make sure I know how to do things. So I'm happy to answer any questions on this, but this is gonna be mostly a, what do you get in the kit? What does it look like? How hard is it to install? An initial, very much like seat of the pants feeling on, is it worth it at mile zero after the braking procedure? Is it a noticeable difference? And then as I do with many things on the truck, I will give periodic updates on that. I don't know what kind of iterations, 5,000, 20,000 miles, whatever. Here's how the brakes have been. I'm not gonna worry about the rears yet. I might swap the pads on that later for the ceramics, depending on how the fronts go. But obviously since the front brakes on your any vehicle do most of the braking, that's where I'm gonna put my focus. So um, I apologize if it's too windy outside and the narration kind of stinks, but let's walk you through what you get with the front pad and rotor set from Power Stop. Okay, folks, we're at the back of the truck. Uh, here's what you get. It's the Z23 uh, kit for the 2019 and up Ram 2500s, um, which retailed, I got it. I think it was about $415. So not an inexpensive kit by any stretch, uh, but let's walk through what you get. So um, nicely labeled for idiots like me, uh, cross drilled and vented rotors. So you get two of those. Um, what I appreciate here is as in part of the box with all of the, the pads and assorted stuff, you get very clear and very, um, specific brake-in procedures. So I've never had ceramic brakes in a truck before, so we're gonna do our best in my neighborhood, which does not have a 40 mile an hour speed limit, to uh, do this exactly the way they say it, but you can just cut this off, keep it in the car with you. Um, here's the pads themselves. What I'll do is a comparison once I pull the, whatever the stock pads are, these are the original pads on the truck, except 37,000 miles. New hardware, new boots, some grease, and then obviously I have uh, brake parts cleaner for the rotors, grease, pad spreading or uh, caliper spreading tool, and then gloves to try to keep my precious fingers 
clean. All right, so like I said, I'm not gonna film the actual procedure. I'm also doing a tire rotation today. But what I will do is just kind of, if people are interested, take a quick look at what the brakes look like on the truck when I pull the first wheel off. And uh, then we'll do a little pad comparison uh, and see what my truck, the pad life looks like at 36,000 miles, 37,000 miles. And then uh, take a couple pictures or video of what the uh, kit looks like installed on one wheel. And then we will move to the break-in procedure and initial thoughts. All right, folks, front left brakes are nearly dissembled. I should to take these clips off that come from the factory to keep the uh, rotor on uh, during assembly. So uh, some tips and initial thoughts. Number one, uh, I had this on a bucket, but I had to get it out of the way um, to get to these two 24 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket on. Uh, maybe I'm just kind of a pansy, I don't think so, but uh, it took a little horsepower to get the, uh, the bottom bolt down there and this one off. So I ended up using impact gun to uh, break it loose, which didn't take a lot of time, but pro tip, if you drive your car in straight, or your truck in straight, and you jack up one side, um, you're not going to be able to, you may have a hard time getting clearance between the bolt head and either the, uh, where the hard line transitions to the rubber line for the brakes or the shock absorber, or even down at the bottom, getting to this bottom bolt and the suspension here. So I had to jack up the other side, turn the wheel to the right so I had more access, and then with the help of that gun, got it right off. So I haven't looked up what the torque spec is, probably a lot. Um, so this might have been just because it was super tight from the factory. So otherwise you could probably just do it with a big breaker bar. I just didn't feel like wrestling with it all day. I just kind of cut to the chase. So I looked at the pads, remember I had said, I thought that the, the front pads were getting kind of low and I had peeked through and I thought they were lower than this. So this is the, sorry, just two hands. So this is the inboard side and there is all kinds of meat left on this pad. So I'm not sure why it was squealing unless I misheard and it was the other side of the truck. We'll see when we get to the other side, take a look at it. But there's a lot of pad left on this. Um, see it's inboard side because that's where the uh, caliper pistons are. And then the outboard side is pretty much the same story. So there's a lot of pad left, so I'm not sure what was causing the squeaking. I'm sure people can weigh in anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to save these just in case this kit doesn't wear out because I think that there's a fair amount of life left. We'll see what the other pads look like. Um, as for the rotor itself, 37,000 miles, it's in good shape. No obvious, you know, canyons, valleys being formed in here. It is a little rusty, but that's to be expected. I live in Virginia, but we've been out on the beach, so we got some, some sand in there. Uh, anyways, so that's what I found after 37,000 miles. This is not looking too bad. I don't know where those squeakings come from. We'll see if I can find it elsewhere. So I'm gonna get this off. Uh, also calipers, calipers look fine, uh, just dirty. Not gonna paint them, not that fastidious. Um, and so let's go ahead and get these little retainer clips off, pull the rotor off, clean the new rotor, get that on, put the bracket back on, torque the spec, and um, let's get this, this side put together and I'll give you my initial thoughts on installation uh, for at least one half of this kit. All right, I thought I'd take a quick minute just to compare the old and the new pads. So obviously this is the new pad, this is the old pad. So this is the driver outboard pad. And you can see here, I don't know what's up with the brakes. We'll see, what, sorry, just to compare. So this is the stock pad, obviously after 36,000 miles. And this is the new one. So I haven't really eaten up a lot more, a lot of the, I thought I'd be a lot lower. Anyways, so you can just see, seems like there's more venting here. There's more surface area, actual pad surface. 
on the power stop pad than on the factory one. Otherwise, the construction seems about the same. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, apply some of the, uh, the lubricant that they provide here. They give you a nice direction from where to put it. Hopefully you've done this before if you haven't. Again, there's other videos out there. Um, so uh, I will give a quick run through of my initial impressions on the install. Once I get all the pads put back on the caliper spread using that tool, uh, well, first the spread and then the pads put on, get everything buttoned back up. Incidentally, the torque spec for the big 24 millimeter bolts that keep the bracket on is 275 pounds. So that's no joke. My torque wrench went up to 250 and I uh, so took it to there and I gave it another ugga dugga. Hopefully that gets me close to 275 uh, and these guys aren't going anywhere. So stay tuned and you'll see the final product what it looks like on the driver's side. Okay folks, here's the final product. Um, I have to say overall the install went pretty well. Just remember those tips. Uh, here's what I was talking about. You can probably see you don't have a lot of room between these bolts and this right here or the shock mount or down below right down here and the shock absorber and the arm here so turn the wheel this way other side obviously um for the passenger side all it's a, it's a normal brake job it just it helps to have a spreader unless you want to go the c-clamp route there, I'm always a little perturbed. You don't get a huge amount of lube in those little tiny packets. I wish they would give you two, but that's just me. Um, so here's where it stands. And so I'm gonna finish up the other side and we will circle back when it's time to do the road test. All right, crew. I decided not to film the um, break-in procedure. It is a little involved, not in a hard way, it's just hard to find. Um, my neighborhood is not conducive to five 40 to 10 mile an hour rapid decelerations followed by five 35 mile an hour to five mile an hour moderate decelerations followed by five minutes of letting your brake school. Aside from, but I ran a couple of stop signs, kind of rolled through them. Um, but on the whole, everything went well with the install. Uh, just those couple things to remember, excuse me, the, um, you're gonna need a big torque wrench, uh, turn the wheels. You might need an impact gun to loosen up the big 24 millimeter um, caliper bracket bolts. Uh, you might hear my kiddos outside. And the install is pretty straightforward if you've done brakes before, if you haven't, there's better places than this channel to look on YouTube for uh, how-tos on the brakes. It's not really that bad though. So initial impressions of the stopping power, it stops faster. I didn't do a bunch, I had my uh, five-year-old with me who has a tendency towards car sickness. So I didn't really do a, all kinds of like stop and go rapid stops, but it definitely stops faster. Is it necessary? I had plenty of pad left on all my pads. I don't know why the truck was squeaking so much at 36, 37,000 miles, but I will feel better and we'll see how it goes uh, when I start driving in traffic more, especially stop and go stuff, or if I do tow, will hopefully the drilled vented rotors and the pads will keep brake fade down and allow for more rapid stops. Obviously this is at like mile 10 of the install, so I'm not, quite prepared to make a call or recommendation on what is essentially a $425 front brake kit. The kit, all inclusive, all the components seemed good, decent quality, would like a little bit more grease, but we made it work. Yeah, I think it's something if you have a Ram 2500, you should think about the Z23 package from PowerStop. We'll update if things change. So still waiting for the Blackstone Labs oil readout. We'll get, we'll post a video on that as soon as I get it. 
and I'm not, I'm gonna see if I have time this weekend. I want to slowly get started on building the bunk and organization system in the back. Uh, and so I've got something that I need to do first when it comes to the tailgate that I will talk with all of you about. So in the interim, I hope you enjoy this, at least on the East Coast, this crazy warm weather. It's supposed to change tomorrow. Um, take this time out to enjoy the nice weather while we can. I hope all is well with you. I hope you're enjoying your vehicles. I hope you're finding enrichment and fulfillment in even day-to-day -day things like replacing brakes or hopefully enjoying the outdoors. And I will catch you on the next video.